All right, so now we're going to sort of formulate something that they call a Cauchy criterion for integrability. Um, and it basically is just a formalization of the idea that if you can make the upper sums and the lower sums arbitrarily close together, then the integral should exist, right? And I mean, if you just envision that in your head, it makes sense because if the upper sums and the lower sums can become arbitrarily close together, then the, um, the um, greatest lower bound of the upper sums and the least upper bound of the lower sums also have to be arbitrarily close together, which means they have to be equal, right? So um, that's, that's the idea. So let me state the theorem. So this is 32.5. Um, bounded function f on a b is integrable if and only if for each epsilon greater than zero there exists the partition P of a B such that um, the upper sum of F on P minus the lower sum of F on P is less than epsilon. Okay, so this is just the idea that the upper sums and the lower sums can become arbitrarily close to each other. And we don't need absolute values because we know that the upper sum is bigger than the lower sum. So this, this is automatically positive, right? So let's just prove this real quick. So suppose that F is integrable and let epsilon be greater than zero, okay? Then, so there exists a uh, P1 and P2 such that, um, right, L of F P1 is greater than L of F minus epsilon over two and U of F P2 is less than u of f plus epsilon over two, right? Because this is because L of f, uh, since, you know, L of f is the least upper bound, u of f is the greatest lower bound, right? This is very, very old, one of the oldest tricks in the book, right? As soon as we learned about least upper bounds and greatest lower bounds, we learned about this kind of reasoning, right? Which is that if you have a least upper bound on a set, then there always has to be a set that's greater or an element of the set that's greater than any smaller number than the least upper bound, right? So that's what we're doing here. Um, so then, right, for these P1 and P2, uh, so then set P equals P1 union P2, right um, then uh, so u of f p minus l of f p is less than or equal to u of f p two right since p two is a coarser p is a or p two is a subset of p right so u of f p two is bigger than u of f p and then minus L of F P1. And L of F P1 is smaller than L of F P. So since it's being subtracted, that all, replacing it like this also increases the value, right? Uh, and then this is uh, less than, in turn, U of F plus epsilon over two minus um, L of F minus epsilon over two, right? And since u of f equals l of f, this is just epsilon over two, since f is integrable. 
right? So, or sorry, this is epsilon. What am I saying? Epsilon, right? So that, that shows one direction of the argument, which is that we can find this capital P, uh, right? We can find this partition P that makes the upper and lower sums be um, close to each other. On the other hand, so on the other hand, suppose um, such P exists um, for any epsilon greater than zero, right? So then, then, right. So for any epsilon greater than zero. So, well, yeah. Yeah. So if we are given epsilon greater than zero, choosing this P shows that U of F is less than or equal to U of FP, which is equal to, oh, right, okay. U of FP minus L of FP plus L of FP, right? Uh, which is less than epsilon plus L of FP. P, which is less than or equal to epsilon plus L of F, right? So U of F is less than or equal to L of F plus epsilon for all epsilon greater than zero, meaning U of F is less than or equal to L of F. But we also know that um, U of F is greater than or equal to L of F, right? So they are equal, meaning uh, F is integrable, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, this, I don't know, it's not even really a trick, it's just like, okay, if, if if u of f minus l of, or if u of fp minus l of fp is less than epsilon then u of fp has to be less than l of fp plus epsilon right that's just since u of fp is greater than l of fp that's just true or greater than or equal to right so anyway um yeah that shows that u of f is less than or equal to l of f plus epsilon for any epsilon epsilon was just arbitrary and this inequality just has to hold for every value of epsilon We've seen this kind of reasoning before too, right? That if you know one number is less than or equal to like any number bigger than the other side, then it's also less than or equal to that like number itself, right? So yeah. Anyway, um, that's the first Cauchy criterion. In the next video, we'll actually look at a different formulation, a different Cauchy criterion. Oh, actually, before we do that, just to explain like why is it called a Cauchy criterion? So why? it called a Cauchy criterion, right? If we compare for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a capital N such that for all N and M bigger than capital N, SN minus SM is less than epsilon, right? Um, here it's like, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a P such that U of F minus, or U of F P, sorry, minus L of F P is less than epsilon. One thing that you could observe about this is that you could actually add in something kind of analogous to the, so like P is kind of like the capital N, right? Uh, they, they, those are kind of an analogy. So, one thing you could do is like, um, so for this P, it is also 
true that for any q1 and q2 with p is subset of q1 and p is subset of q2 we have u of f q um yeah f q1 minus l of f q2 is less than epsilon right so then q1 and q2 can kind of play the roles of little n and little m up here right and of course we're dealing with like two different things we have like a u and then we have an l so those kind of like it's weird, hard, it's weird to think of them as being kind of part of the same quote unquote sequence. I mean, if that's the analogy we're trying to draw, but, um, but if you ignore that, then the analogy otherwise like matches up pretty closely, right? That this capital P is kind of like a threshold um, where it's like all the partitions for all the partition, like any pair of partitions that are like finer than this capital P, um, the upper and lower sums are like close to each other basically. That's the idea. Right. And here it's like for all, you know, pairs of terms in the sequence beyond this capital N, those two terms are close to each other. Right. That's the other, that's, that's the idea of the Cauchy sequence. And one of the things about this is that it's like, you can use this to show, right. There's no reference to like what the actual values of U of F and L of F are in this statement. Right. If we go back here, we don't see U of F or L of F in the statement of 32.5 at all. So it's like, you don't have to know what the value of U of F is or L of F. You can just show that like U of F P and L of F P get arbitrarily close to each other. Like, and they're both getting close to some value, but you don't know what it is, but you don't have to know what it is. You can still say that it's integrable just by knowing that U of F P and L of F P get close to each other, right? So that's kind of the idea of why it's a Cauchy criterion. Um, so yeah, and then in the next video, we'll see a different Cauchy criterion that instead of using um, capital P as the parameter here, so yeah, it's like capital P is kind of like the parameter. Um, so P is the, the way I like to say it is P is the parameter controlling convergence, right? So capital N is the parameter up here that you select to force the convergence to actually happen, basically. It's right, it's like by picking a big enough capital N, you can make the convergence be sort of like arbitrarily close to, you know, the, the limiting behavior, right? But, and then down here, it's like capital P is this threshold that you put this parameter that you select so that like the convergence has actually like progressed to the point where your approximations are within epsilon of each other or whatever, right? So, um, yeah, it's, it really is like the partition you, you kind of think of as like an index here that's like controlling, controlling the process of convergence. So in the next um, video, we'll see a different Cauchy criterion that kind of uses a different indexing concept, I guess.